crucified the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. On the third day, he rose from the dead, declared victory of the grave, death, and hell. He has gone back to the Father to prepare a place for us in his kingdom. He will come back as his promise to judge the world and to deliver the righteous. We believe in the Holy Ghost, the Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and eternal life for all true believers. For God is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, and the glory forever. Amen. 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 God bless you. God bless you. We are awfully glad that you decided to spend a little time with the old world behind the bed of your old man's church. And I'm going to ask um, uh, Gerald to do the Deacon Green to do the scripture and Reverend George to do our, do our, our morning prayer. Somebody say amen. Amen. Uh, Deacon Gerald be trying to bring the senior um, uh, Psalms 103, 1 through 13. Good morning. Good morning. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgiveth all thy iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who groweth thee, thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. He sanctifies thy mouth with good things, so that thou is renewed like the eagles. The Lord executed righteousness. And judgment on all that are oppressed. He made known his way to Moses and his acts to the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and plenteous in mercy. He was not always child, neither would he keep his flame of anger forever. He has not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. As far as the east from the west, so far as he removed our transgressions from us, like as the Father pitted his children, so the Lord pitted them that fear him. I read Psalm 103, verses 1 through 13. Amen. Let the church say amen. Amen. God's word for God's people. Get ready to be with the church in prayer. That's one thing I learned. If old bro can't do that job, we can pray. Amen. sick list today. I, I need to read the names tonight. Uh, I want you to think about these folks as you know them personally. We lift them up spiritually. Amen. Amen. Uh, Sister Susan Hoff, Brother Mother Virginia Meacham, Mother Lynn Jenkins, Brother Dwight Bain, Deacon Dwight Walker, Sister Bill McLean, Deacon Victor Morrison, Mother Joan Morrison, Mother Dolores Rogers, Sister Mueller Mitchell, Sister Renee Wilson, Brother William Day, Inanwa, Lucretia Mosley, um, Reverend Matt Jordan, Brother Joseph Hawkins, Sister Liz Rogers, and Little uh, Master Anthony Jordan. So we won't get a number here. Uh, there's a lot going on in the Bible community. We got a uh, lot of unique sicknesses. People have asked for prayer, but they ask not to have a name. You respect your promise. Amen. Amen. So we, we want to lift that up to you know, have one that has been in the intensive care for a minute now. And so we want to uh, lift that person up the specialist. If there are others, uh, the time is here. If you want to lift somebody, I know Michelle always would like for us to remember Angelina, so we're gonna go ahead and remember her in prayer. So did I miss anybody? Real family. The grand family. Brim family. Amen. So, family. Oh, McDuffie family. Amen. Smith. Smith family. The Hodges. The Hodges family. And Amen. the McDaniel. The McDaniel family. I'm Marshall. sorry. Marshall. And Dallas. Marshall. And Dallas. Okay. Amen. So, who? Sister Stephanie Collins. Amen. Now, look, look, y'all. It's, it's very important to me. 
and uh, that we all come together for a moment of prayer. Is that be all right? And so I'm going to come down to the altar. Yeah, I know I don't walk much these days, so if I can take the energy to come down there, y'all about to be able to come up here. And y'all, y'all sing a little of I really love the Lord for me. You don't know what he done for me. He gave me the victory.
know, this, this truly is the day that the Lord has made. And we should be excited. Somebody say excited. Excited. To be in God's house one more again. Yes. Amen. Amen. We're not going to take a whole lot of time to do what we need to do. Are we? Amen. Amen. But y'all know it's giving time. Yes. Uh, let me try that again. It's giving time. Yes. Amen. And we're going to have, uh, I forgot my own book. Get it from my wife. I'll get the offer of prayer. If you have an envelope, hold it up. Somebody be about to get it to you. If not, you can bring it next time. Somebody say, I can bring it next time. I can bring it next time. Amen. We give people thine all, whatever the gift they be. But what we have is thine alone. We trust the Lord from thee. Father God, bless the gift, bless the gift. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And for his sake, we pray. Let the church say amen. 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 Well, while that's coming up, I got a special treat from you. Uh, all the way from the Gospel House of Gospel Singers. A dynamic and I, I, I thought she was surely season for a little while. So where do y'all hear this? Y'all give a hand as she comes. Oh, give a big hand. Come on, man. They're free.
Easy. Easy. And let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart be acceptable in all thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength, my redeemer. Somebody say amen. 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 This is a, a pretty good day uh, for me. I, I see some of my co workers here. I see uh, one of my ministers from the last church snuck in through the back door. Uh, it's good to see her. And I'm not going to call their names. <laughs> right <laughs> door. And uh, just try not to. I'm, uh, Monroe, I'm not, I am not doing that. I'm, I'm going to leave their names alone. I don't want them not to come here in. Yeah, so y'all y'all just pray for them and just be glad they're here. Uh, we had Thanksgiving, and I, I thought about this thing. I, I, I have a, every now and then, I, I'll get back to a concept. You know, y'all know I'm going to preach Samson once a year. Y'all, you might want to get it like you got your system. Going to the Ten Commandments once a year. Somebody, I won't hear it unless I do it. But today I want to talk about five kernels of corn. And, and for some, some of us, we haven't seen kernels of corn. We don't know what it looks like. So I took the liberty of bringing, it the liberty, of bringing kernels of corn so that you can see it. Junior, do you know what kernels of corn look like? See what I mean? Because they don't, they don't get around. By the time we get corn, it's in the can. Yeah. You know, and uh, we don't eat pump kernels anymore. You know, we get a little thing, you put it in the microwave, and it pop all up, and we're through. But this is this is what I'm talking about. These these pieces, the little bit of pieces here, and the reason being because the pilgrims they had a custom of putting fine kernels of corn on every empty plate at Thanksgiving time, and each member, and they went around the table, they would pick the kernel of corn up, and they would tell everybody what they were thankful for. Somebody missed that. You know, because if you really think about it, we all have something to be thankful for. Amen. Oh, God's been good. I know Amen. Amen. And, 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 you know, when my kids were little, they, they would say, I'm thankful for family, the ability to smile, to be alive. Uh, and then some of them would just say, Dad, I'm just thankful. And the older I get, the more I realize the importance of the little thing. And see, five kernels of corn reminds us of the little things. Because these are little things. Mm -hmm. Everybody missed it. And so, the, the, the whole thing is, is that if it were me, with my first kernel of corn, I would declare my thanks to God, yeah. who has given me in my moments of immense trial and tribulation a peace that surpasses all understanding. Yeah. And so, yes, I'm thankful for. God giving me a godly bride. Don't get me wrong. He said that he, that man that finds a good woman, finds find a woman, finds a good thing. But he gave it to me. And so I thank God for it. I, 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 she has shared this ministry. She worked with me through my trouble. She has cooked and cared for me and my children. She's been my life partner, my prayer partner, my trusted counselor, and my best friend for many years and coming. And, and always, as every Thanksgiving, even when we're out of town, I want to take her out to dinner. You know what she want to do? She want to cook that turkey in her hand. And all the trimmings. We had the pecan pie and the apple pie. Uh, we had the, 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 the macaroni and cheese. Y'all missed it. <laughs> missed it. And, and then, I'm, I'm, I'm thankful for, I, I hope they got me out of the doghouse, by the way. I'm gonna, she said, no. okay. Well, I'm thankful for our children and our grandchildren who left us a trail of memories. Sometimes I just sit in the dead. We got one of those electric photo things, and it just changes pictures. And it takes me all the way back when they were little kids. And then now they're big grown kids, and now they have beards and mustaches and more hair than I have and all that kind of stuff. But, but, I, but I remember that. But then, I, and then I'm, I'm thankful for family. Close friends uh, for for each of you who have really tried to do ministry. You know, to, to me, the most important ministry is not what you do in this building. It's what you do outside. You know, so I, I always look at the Duncans. I mean, that's that's their driving force. You know, every month he has to be a Duncan. Well, 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 there's there's Anakin. Now we're, we're going down to such and such a place. If you need to be there, oh. But the whole thing is we're doing ministry. 
outreach. And in our way, we have a, a weekly weekday Sunday school every Wednesday. At the end of Sunday school, they uh, Bible study. They decide that we're sending money out to local and foreign missions, and that drives me perfectly happy. Because that's the most important thing. Because if, if, if we can't hurt, help the hurt, help people who are in need, then we're not doing what this, what this ministry is supposed to be. Because Jesus said, when you have done it to the least of mine, you have done it unto me. And so I, I want you to say, um, I'm thankful next, if I pick my grain of seed up, it'll be for forgiveness. And, and so you what kind of, of, of religion would this be? What kind of Christianity would this be? That we had, had a God that was not able to forgive us for our sins. You know, and I want to thank God for that. The, the psalmist reminds us that God forgives us for all this, our sins. Uh, Micah 7, 18 to 19 declares, Who is a God like unto us that pardoneth iniquity and passeth by the transgressions of the remnant of his heritage? He retained not his anger forever because he delighted in mercy. He will turn again. He will have compassion upon us. He will subdue our iniquities and that will cast, cast all their sins into the depths of the sea. You know what I mean? That means that no matter what you have done, you have not done nothing too bad for God to forgive you. I don't care who you've done it to, how you've done it, God can forgive you. See, how many of y'all believe that today? And that the Lord Jesus died to wash away our sins and, and, and ask God to forgive us that our sins are cast into the depths of the sea. For we got to confess it. We got to repent. We got to believe. And you know what that means? It means that God has cast all our sins so far away. But he doesn't even remember our sins anymore. But not the devil. The devil lives in a village of I remember when. He can remind you of everything you've done wrong. Remember? I can't tell you all stuff. But anyway. As far as the east from the west, so far have he removed our transgression. God offers forgiveness. All we have to do is ask and repent. And then I went back in my bag and I pulled out a seed of redemption. You see, God forgives and then he redeems us. Everybody understand? He restores you. He fixes you. He cleanses you up that you can be suitable for use in his kingdom. I mean, we, we just not, uh, you, you, you know how they, they say in the, the prison. Well, I, I know a lot of y'all don't know how that, but I'm just saying. When you're in prison, what do they want to do for you? They want to what? Make you over. Huh? Make you over. They want to make you over. They want to clean you up. And they got a turn for that. Anybody know what it is? What did they do to you? When they did that, they began to come out of prison. What, what they say they have done to you? You have done what? Re Somebody here? Say it again. Rehabilitate. You know, that, that, that's what we are. We are rehabilitated. Uh, and that's what verse 4 is talking about. Who redeems your life from the pit, crowns you with love and compassion. He redeems us. We, we, we've been uh, never paid and we can never pay enough for all the sins that we need to have forgiven in this body. What are you saying, preacher? I'm saying, I don't care who you are. You can't sing enough. You can't tie enough. You can't usher enough. The only thing that can wash away our sins is nothing but the what? But the blood of Jesus. The songwriter said, Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. And, and if we will plead his blood, God will redeem us. If he would plead his blood, the Lord not only our, will take our souls from hell, but he also redeems our lives from the clutches of the devil. All oh, but ever consider all the penitentiaries, the sanitariums, the hospitals, the halfway houses, filled with our people whose lives are being destroyed by the enemy. And then Jesus said to you in 713, why does the gate broad as the way that leads to destruction? And many are on the road, but we can praise and thank God with the salvation declare, he brought me up out of a horrible pit. He brought me up out of the mire of clay. And he set my feet upon the rock and he established my goings. And he had put a new song in my mouth. Even praise our God. And then he said, many shall see it and fear and shall trust in the Lord. What else I saying? I thank God. 
for redemption. And then finally, and I'm about to take my seat, I saw the colonel a healed. Now, I don't know too many folk in here who ain't never had something to be healed from. That God has brought us all through something. Amen. You've been well all your life. Amen. And, and healing ain't always a physical healing. Some of us have psychological healings that we have to deal with, physiological. But in the midst of this, is that those who are broken on the inside, broken in spirit, broken hearted, are caught up in some strange stuff. I mean, you, you ever seen the, the perfect couple? He looked good, she looked good. They drive the Lexuses and new trucks. They move through life like everything was honking door. And, and, in the, and in the midst of all of that, and I'm not doing husband chronicles or anything, but in the middle of all of that, there are broken marriages, broken relationships. Some of us are just broke, broke financially, and we need healing in all those areas. Some of y'all broke as a joke. Amen. You want to walk around looking like you all that in a bag of chips. And some dip, and we know you broke, but we saw you when you got cracked. I'm trying to keep talking about somebody today. Isn't it good to know that God heals the total paranormal of our infirmities? That whatever we are in need of it, God's got it, and, and whatever's wrong with us, God can fix it. I'm so glad this morning to find out from Psalm 147 and 3 that He healed the broken heart and binding up the wounds. And in Isaiah 30 and 26, that in the day of the Lord, the Lord binding up the breach of His people, healing the, the, the stroke of their wound, that God can and God will heal the diseases that afflict His people. Look at the word. One more time. It says He binded up the breach. He's talking about healing relationships. Can I talk about this and not be through? Now, first of all, uh, now, now, we see, I'm just talking about what I'm talking about. I don't know nobody's situation. I ain't been in nobody's house. I ain't seen nobody mistreat their husband, wife, son, daughters, nephews, nieces, whatever. None of them. But I know that, 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 that some of these situations are terrible. Husband and wives sleeping in the same bed. They can't even hold a conversation. <laughs> Folks riding in the same car, eating out of the same pot, attending the same church, and can't get along. Help me somebody. I, I, I'm talking about healing relationship. And, and, and the thing about it is, some of us get caught up in the call up so bad that we forgot that we serve a God who is a healer, yeah. that is a bomb and healer. And you know, I, I don't know if y'all remember or not, there was a man. He was impotent. And he, and he couldn't get up. And he was by some waters where an angel came once a day. And, and the angel had healing virtue. And whoever got in the water right as the angel carried it, that was the only person that could be saved. And so this man, 30 some years standing outside that pool and he couldn't get in there. But I want you to understand that, that, that everybody can't be first. Only one person can be first. I ain't never been first. If they ask us to measure all the heights of the men in the church, I'm the shortest. So I ain't never be first. But let me tell you something. This seed, that kernel seed that God gave me, that's my kernel. And I'm the first to use my seed. And that and God gives me my own blessing. He gives me my own measure of grace. He gives me my own healing authority. I don't need yours. I don't need his. I don't need her. All I need to do is call on the Lord. I don't know about what you, but every now and then, huh? you ought to say for his Lord. I'll do anything. You ought to be able to let God know what a mighty God I serve. I want you to know this morning. That the God I serve, He is an able God. And God ever done anything for you? Who is it that woke you up this morning? It was not your alarm clock. It was nobody but Jesus. I want you to know the bread on your table, the clothes on your pants, everything that you had, it all belonged to God. And God gave you your high kernels. You need to every now and then pick one out and say, Thank you, Lord, for how you blessed me. Pick one out. Thank you, Lord. Well, I, I would need just to say thank you. Pick one out for redemption. Pick one out for healing. And let them know you look people dead in their eyes. And you say, for God I live. And for God I die. And let them know oh, what a mighty God. 
your rescue. Yes. Oh, he'll put food on your table. Yes. He gave you something pretty to hang out with. Yes. That'll put a smile on your face. Yes. A pep in your step. Yeah. Joy in your soul. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Sister Girl, I'm out of trouble here. <laughs> I've been working hard. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Tell somebody God gave it to me. God gave it to me. Look, I'm gonna split some birds and dangle some parts of it. Y'all say these is mine. These are mine. Uncle Wallace, you ain't said a thing. <laughs> <laughs> God. <laughs> God has blessed us, all of us. Yes. He has really blessed us. I mean, I ain't much. When I looked around, the best looking pastor in the world. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Some of the pastors hurt. Y'all, y'all, y'all been on the first count. All right, okay. All right, he ugly, but okay, let's see. I guess what I'm really uh, getting at it. We, we have fun. Let me tell you, if I can't come to church to have fun, I don't want to come. Y'all go, go somewhere else, please. We got to have fun. I, I don't want to keep you, but I don't leave alone. As long as I can worship God, because it's in the worship. If you come to worship, then it's okay. Um, every now and then, if you don't say nothing, but look where you call me from. Yeah. And I know, don't get me wrong, I'm not pointing what I should be, but I'm far away from what I used to be. Yeah. Because I love the Lord. Yeah. And, and as we open the doors of the church, I'm asking you this morning. If you die, then y'all leave the baby alone. Don't bother her. She, she's saying amen. Okay. If you die today, would you be absent from the body of the presence of the Lord? If not, I invite you to open your heart and receive Jesus the Lord to save in your life. If thou shalt confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth with righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made in salvation. If you know Jesus has drifted away, I also invite you to come. And reconnect. Why? Because God is what? Marriage. 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 Everybody understand that? Yeah. And, and I don't care how far in your backs live, if you come to him, he said that whosoever will come, and I will in no wise cast out. Mm -hmm. And so today, wherever you are in that lot, if you stand in need of prayer, counseling, a church fellowship, uh, after I will close this selection, I'm going to ask you to come over to the right. Raise your hand, Reverend John. And meet over there and we'll take care of that. And I'm, I'm going to sing this song. And uh, if y'all sing it with me, we'll go home. If not, I'm preach another minute sermon. I'm trying to stir y'all up.
you done all your notes? Y'all get that one right here. <laughs> Amen. Let's pray. Eternal God, we thank you right now for everything that our eyes have seen. Our ears have heard, our heart has felt. I thank you for the fellowship of Kenton Spirit. My mind says, yeah. it says that as I walk on this road, yeah. I can't even walk without your holding my hand. The Lord, if I think about that one person who may not be saved, I want to pray for them this morning. Remember this, they will not see, they must be saved. They will not come, they must be bought. They will not learn, they must be taught. If every soul wins a soul, then every soul will be saved. Y'all point to the rock, point to the rock. Say, go get your one. Go get your one. And now, unto him who faith will keep us from falling. And present us faultless before his presence with exceeding great joy. To the only wise God our Savior. Be glory and be majesty. Dominion shall power somebody. Go now, henceforth and forevermore. Let us sing along with the choir. Amen. 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 Just smile.